Hello and welcome to Geography Now Switzerland. Um, my reaction, faceless guy, a uh, German. Um, so my neighbor, my southern neighbor, Switzerland. It's a neutral country, which I like very much. I hope they remain neutral in in this future as well. Um, and they speak German. Or a German dialect. I mean, also um, in Germany, we speak just a German dialect. So neither Austrian German... Um, German, German, Swiss German, um, Liechtenstein German, or Belgium German, or Luxembourg German are uh, the true German. There is no true German language. We are all just speaking different dialects um, of a uh, um, common um, language which maybe was spoken in this region a long while ago. But yeah, no true German, never, never. But of course, I. I'm most used to the German German. I make this reaction in English, of course, because my channel is in English and I upload videos in English so people all around the world can um, watch it from Tajikistan, South Africa to the US and Russia. Um, so, all the corners of the world, people can watch me. But I am German. My um, first language is, of course, German. And now we react to the joke of Switzerland. Mm, maybe I will also visit Switzerland soon. Maybe I will make the vacation with my family. Um, I'm not sure yet, but maybe. And of course here um, in the webcam you see again Shinta, my cute little teddy. Um, I think when I, I, I use the webcam I um, show you not so much my hands, which are boring, but my teddy. And I um, represent uh, Palestine through her, and um, I, of course, as well, stand for Palestine, a Palestinian liberation, um, the struggle for statehood against apartheid occupation and um, discrimination, which is, of course, a, a t part of apartheid, of course. That's what apartheid is. Um, I we recently did a video about Israel, two hours long, two hours, 20 minutes long, and it is... Um, a reaction to a joke of you know, Israel, which itself is just 20 minutes long, so it's roughly seven times longer than the original video. This video will not be seven times longer than the Swiss video. I don't have too, so much to say extra to Switzerland. Probably I will mention a few things, maybe also show a few things. Like recently, um, a year ago or so, um, or one and a half or so, um, uh, Swiss uh, prevented Switzerland prevented Germany from um, um, delivering um, a certain ammunition to Ukraine, which was produced in Switzerland, which I liked very much. I am against war. I am against the delivering of, of weapons to um, Israel and Ukraine. Um, always in favor of negotiations. Um, it's a Pope that recently um, made a good statement, and um, but. Anyway, and now it's about Switzerland. Um, I like the video. Please also like my video. Enough introduction. Let's start with the video. One, two, three. All right, we have now reached Switzerland. Alps, cheese, neutrality. Moment. Uh, I make it a little bit louder. It's always um at fifty. All right, we have now reached Switzerland. Alps, cheese, neutrality, banks. Well, Switzerland didn't start off that way. It was basically a bunch of mountain folk that built an entire economy off of what are essentially European ninjas. And now if shit goes down, they have a bunch of bunkers they can hide in in case of nuclear war. That's also true. <coughs> they have uh, more enough uh, bunkers and um, nuclear shelters to for the entire Swiss population. Plus, I think maybe. Um, one million or two million more. It's um like twelve percent or so, um extra, um uh, additionally to their own population, which is um interesting. But um, yeah, I heard this and I also heard that they can uh, defend themselves very well, and um, they have like a system to blow up uh, bridges and um uh, blockade streets in case of uh, war. War happens, but we'll get into that later. In the meantime, here's the intro song. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. In any case, Switzerland, the crossroads of the Germanic and Latin worlds. Known as the Confederation Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation. Helvetica, yeah, I heard this. 
that they don't call themselves uh, Switzerland, but Helvetia. I think it's pronounced in German Helvetia, but I'm not sure. Named after the Helveti tribe, which were actually Celtic. Hmm, we should hang out sometime. That were mostly wiped out and driven away by the Latins and Germanic peoples. Oh, well, okay. But anywho, so I actually promised my Swiss friend Herman that he could be in this episode with me. And I wanted to fly him out here to Los Angeles to co-host. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this episode, the US had restrictions on Europeans entering our country and the actual date of acceptance for Europeans to enter would take way too long. So I decided if I can't fly him out here, why don't I just fly out there and- <laughs> Yeah, that's um, and he was, yeah, uh, he was in Switzerland. I notice this um i saw this video also before i think i'm not, just not sure when make a makeshift geography now studio set and have him in the episode here i go um i like this travel videos he sometimes did um recently he was in cyprus i think in the un buffer zone also which is amazing um yeah i like this i hope he will do more of this um later after Zim zimbabwe Zimbabwe will be the last one, yes. Oh, made it! And guys, say hi to Mr. Herman. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, Switzerland! Woo. Yeah. Again, I'm super short, so I gotta step on a box. What does it mean to you, Herman, to be Swiss? There's, of course, the whole cheese and chocolate thing. For me, to be honest, we are quite grateful that uh, we live in this nice country, which is just... I try to hear a German accent, uh, and maybe he has one, I'm not sure yet, uh, I will try to listen more, um, I mean, listen if I can hear it. Just uh, safe, stable, and it has been like this for a long time. By the way guys, uh, this is the guy that was in my heritage trip video, uh, this is my Swiss go-to guy. You're an expert on Switzerland, right? You sure. sure. Alright, and with that, let's move on, let's find Switzerland on the map, shall we? <laughs> So Switzerland is kind of a unique place in Europe, mostly because of the way how it was formed. You see, most countries had a king, but Switzerland didn't. It was just a bunch of annoyed mountain folk who didn't want to align with any king and became independent. Now, there's a lot of disagreement on exactly how Switzerland was formed. Some people say maybe it was the medieval times. Some people say it was the more modern Napoleonic Wars. So technically, the earliest form of Switzerland was after the Rütlischwur. Uri Schwyz and Unterwalden agreed to have an alliance. It was basically like, hey, Schwyz! How's it going? Hey man, this army just came in and attacked me for no reason. Oh, the way me too! Are we uh, talking about right? the armies coming through without our permission? Yes! Uh, oh my god, so, so annoying! <gasps> you know what we should do? We should form a um a confederation. A confederation. A yeah. confederation. Let's do it. Like, let's form a confederation. Wow. Together? <laughs> um so it's um, much, much smaller at the time, but then they um, more tribes, I think, uh, or more people um, joined them, and then they um, grew to this has we, we know them, no? And maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but... <laughs> then later it was like, hey, can, can we join, please? Can I join too? Just like... I don't speak the language, but we'd like to join. This gives me an idea, maybe I should expand. The point is, Switzerland started to grow. And today you have the Switzerland you see before you locked away safely in the Alps. Let's go to the map now, shall we? First of all, Switzerland is a landlocked nation located at the convergence point of Western, Central, and Southern Europe, surrounded by five countries. Remember, don't forget little Liechtenstein! The country is a federal republic made up of 26 cantons, each with their own unique flag and coat of arms. However, keep in mind, six of these cantons are considered traditional half cantons, which means they are grouped into three pairs that share a councillor in their government. In order to maintain a somewhat decentralized government system that keeps cantons happy. Technically, Switzerland has no official capital, as stated by their constitution, but Bern is considered the def- I heard this also, that uh, there is no capital, theoretically, but um, Bern is um, everything, um, I mean, it's kind of the closest thing to a capital you can have, but uh, uh, technically they don't have any capital, which is uh, funny. Um, South Africa has uh, three capitals, um and uh um i think uh Bol bolivia has two one two and most countries has, have one and switzerland has technically none and that's sure if it's it similar to the us which technically doesn't have a native language um everyone it's of course english most people speak english um but uh it's technically from the constitution the us also doesn't have any native language official language 
official, not native, I mean official language. Um, and it is similar to um, Switzerland, doesn't, I mean, not having an official capital according to the constitution. De facto capital, as it holds the House of Parliament and other federal authorities. The country's largest city, though, would be Zurich, located in the northeastern part of the country. It Zurich, Zurich, Zurich. <laughs> so it's a German name. I'm, I'm not sure how it is um, in, in, in Switzerland it's pronounced, but here in German it's um, pronounced um, Zurich. And uh, in Switzerland is pronounced pronounced the Schweiz. It also hosts the largest and busiest airport, Zurich International. And from there, the next largest cities are Geneva and Basel. Geneva and um, uh, Genf in German and uh, um, Basel. Basel. <laughs> it's just a little bit pronounced differently, but um, uh, it's it's written the same way. Um, Genf and uh, Zurich, uh, Zurich is also written the same way, I think it's just pronounced differently. Zurich. Um, uh, and um, I think the sharp S sound and the U sound um, is difficult for Americans or English, English speaking people. Um, and um, Genf, uh, Genf is, I think, uh, so, I mean, again, it's a German name, but uh, I'm not sure if there's anything difficult to pronounce. Also, Zurich, the um, sh sh sound is um, very difficult for English um, speaking people. Which also carry respectively the second and third busiest airports as well. In fact, about 75% of the population actually lives in the North Swiss Plateau, even though it only makes up about 30% of the land surface. Speaking of which, the only ambiguous dispute they have is with Germany and Austria over the Bodensee or Lake Constance. The three countries have never formally established borders and they kind of just don't say anything. In any so, somewhere in this lake, there's a border between. Um, um, the Bodensee, also in, in German it's pronounced Bodensee, in English Lake Constance, okay. But somewhere in the middle there is a border and um, that's uh, as then more probably the easiest or best way to enter um, the country through this lake um, when no one exactly knows where the border is. Um, but uh, yeah, also not a weak point but um, something um, um, where it had it it, it's not um, as he said as clearly defined where the border is but um, definitely on the other side of the lake I think <laughs> interesting huh? In any case, Switzerland also has some other unique border anomalies. For one, by Schafthausen, Switzerland tried to grab as much land as they could north of the Rhine River, leaving a unique layout of territory grabs that jut into Germany, and it even leaves one exclave of Germany entirely within Switzerland. I have heard of this before. Um, Bissingen am Hochrhein is a German, but everything surrounding it is um, um, Switzerland. And I'm not sure how this was during the pandemic, um, but probably there were some difficulties. But this is also interesting. I would like to go there someday, maybe. Um, interesting, yes. <laughs> in Am Hochrein, head down south to the Ticino Canton, and you have the Campione d'Italia, which is basically one big casino resort. It is an I, I heard this in the Itali Italy episode. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Exclave of Italy completely engulfed within Switzerland, only about a half mile or less than one kilometer over a hill away from Italy. Finally, if you go up to Basel, you have some very weird skinny land salients that jut into France for no logical reason, like this one by the town of Riti, which at its narrowest choke point is less than 230 feet or 70 meters wide. Transport in Switzerland is top notch though. Well paved highways, tunnels, and train networks connect every region of Switzerland. There are much more lakes in Switzerland than I am, uh, um, New or expected. I mean, um, I have seen this video before, so um, but it's much more than I um remember. <laughs> and especially in the north, in the south, there are not much lakes. The biggest and most proud engineering project that the country has ever gone through, though, would probably be the Gotthard Base Tunnel. It is the longest rail tunnel and deepest traffic tunnel in the world, effectively cutting through the Alps, connecting the canton of Uri with Ticino. This tunnel has heavily bolstered the efficiency of Switzerland's freight and passenger transport, as about 11,000 people and about 70,000 tons of cargo are able to swiftly pass by daily. Fun fact, because of Hermann, me and my mom actually got to go see Liechtenstein. He drove us all the way from Zurich, all the way through Liechtenstein in Austria, and we ended up in Linda. 
Lindau, Germany, where we met the worst waiter ever at a casino restaurant. I remember this guy was horrible. In Switzerland, public transport is really good. You can get almost anywhere by train. That's the Jungfrau Jochbahn, which brings you above 3,500 meters. But that's kind of like more of a touristy thing, right? Yeah, like, that's yeah. a tour. I've never been there. Speaking of trains, you said something about like they donate the old ones, right? Yeah, actually trams. The trams of Zurich are going to Ukraine and the trams from Basel are going to um, Belgrade. The interesting thing is that historically, some places that are actually outside of modern day Switzerland used to be protectorates or associates of Switzerland. They are Mulhouse, which lies in today's France, Rottweil in Germany, Valtellina and Bormio, which today lie in Italy. Even though the Austrian state of Vorarlberg once voted to become part of Switzerland in World War One, we decided to better not take them in. You rejected them! Now, another thing about Switzerland you have to understand is that they kind of have... <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's funny, by the way. Um, I paused a little bit late, but that's uh, curious. Um, why did they do? Why do? Why did they choose to? Um, why did they want to join Switzerland? Huh? I'm not sure. Tell me if you know. To better not take them in. You rejected them. Now another thing about Switzerland you have to understand is that they kind of have like two imaginary lines based off of the cultural regions. You can explain. What are they, Herman? Well, there's the Röstigraben separating the French-speaking part of Switzerland from the German and then there's the Polenta Graben which is between the German part and the South which speaks Italian. Basically one side drinks beer the other wine. Due to their history of constantly being invaded or outside forces threatening or just generally bothering them the Swiss have developed a culture of let's just kind of call it heavy defensive caution. We are neutral but we still uh, are prepared to defend ourselves to make it. Um I also heard, and I have to criticize this, of course, as well, um, as I criticized this in the Greece episode, in the Finland episode, I think, and also in the Israel episode, of course, um, and if maybe as other countries as well. Conscription. Conscription is wrong, and no one should be forced to um, be trained or um, have anything to do with weapons and war. So, yeah, that's um, wrong, Switzerland. It's inhumane, and... Um, yeah, it's um, disgusting. It's as expensive as possible for anybody to attack us. This is why, should the event ever occur, the country is loaded with copious amounts of bunkers everywhere. Like, it's actually a law. All living units have to have a bunker or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. We have a lot of hidden um, bunkers, and if you go hiking, you will just see them, but they're nowhere on the map. There's no exact number on how many are built, but apparently they can protect the entire population plus more, right? I think. The question is for how long, right? In any um, 14%, um, they say, um, I heard 12%, but something like this, so, um, I mean, I'm not even sure if I heard 12, but, um, I, I remember 12 right now, so maybe, um, it was always 14, but roughly something like this, 10, 10 plus percent more, a little bit, um, extra, then the, um, additionally to the Swiss population. case, Switzerland has so many notable cool sites to see and visit. We actually filmed this part before I could... Hi, I'm back. Um, I did something on my phone, wrote with someone. Let's continue. Audition anybody to do it, so uh, I'll just uh, fill this in with a voice, dubbed voiceover. Here's Alex. Hey guys, I'm Alex. I'm from Geneva, Switzerland, although I'm currently in Mexico. Here's a few things you should absolutely check out if you haven't made it to Switzerland. Check out the Gédo Fountain, the Cathedral Saint-Pierre, uh, Palais des Nations, which is home of the United Nations, and the CERN Hydrogliden Castles. Check out the Chateau de Chillon, the Oberhofen, uh, Valais and Tourbillon, uh, Chateau de Gruyère, uh, Bunhausen, which is basically a capital. Check out the Bear Park, uh, Kinderfressen. Moment. The Gruyere, uh, Bunhausen, which is basically a capital. Check out the. That sounds interesting. I I, I make um my picture of this because that sounds pretty interesting. Um, I'm I'm curious about this. Um, I really remember this, and maybe I will go there. Um, or at some point in the future, I'm not sure when. But um, this sounds interesting. Yeah. Um. I mean, look, take a look at Chinta. She's a bear. I like um, bears. Bear park. Uh, Kinderfressenbrunnen statue. Lauterbrunnen that has over seventy waterfalls. Uh, the Lake Lucerne has the Lion Monument and the Chapel Bridge. 
Yeah, 347 ski results covering a distance of 4,500 miles. Sermat, Sass Face, Samarit, and my personal favorite, Verbier. For more Mediterranean feels, check out the Old Town Piazzas uh, and beautiful lakeside views of Lugano down in the south of Switzerland. Switzerland also has a bunch of museums and amusement parks. So for that, check out uh, Aqua Park, Conyland, Swiss Vapor Park, and the Geiger Museum, which is absolutely amazing. And if you're looking for an adrenaline rush, check out the mountain coasters, also a toboggan. This looks also this looks also fancy. Amazing. And if you're looking for an adrenaline rush, check out. This looks also amazing. And uh, um, moment, uh, I also make a picture here from from this. Uh, it looks fancy. Um, the video is uh, 33 minutes long, and I have already over 20 minutes. So that's quite um, um awesome. I mean. At the mountain coasters, also a toboggan, as well as the Stuchbahn funicular, which is the stu uh, steepest funicular in the world. But yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Alex. You're always going underground for whatever reason. Yeah, if you have a mountain in between two places, what are you gonna do? Which is actually the perfect transition into the next segment. The. <laughs> Of course, you cannot talk about Switzerland. I think Switzerland also belongs to the top 10 countries which are the most mountainous. I think uh, countries which are more mountainous are Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Bhutan. But Switzerland is, I, I think, also in the top 10, I guess, top 10 definitive, and maybe even top 5. I'm not sure. Switzerland without talking about the mountains and nature. Literally the moment you say Switzerland, obviously images of like snow-capped mountains and valleys and cows with cowbells. And even the iconic Matterhorn probably comes up, although 12 people a year usually die on it. But yeah, it's still very beautiful. It's a challenge. <laughs> so let's go to the map and break down Switzerland's land makeup. Now despite Switzerland being famous for the Alps and being the most mountainous country in Europe, the actual Alps only make up about 60% of the country. The remainder of the country is made up of two other geographic zones. Owns the Swiss or Central Plateau, which is the lowest part of the country and where most of the agriculture and livestock raising is concentrated, and the Jura Mountains in the northwest on the border with France. Of course, in the Alps, you can find Shocker, the tallest peak, Dufourspitze, just on the border with Italy. No, the famous incredibly difficult to climb Matterhorn just a few miles away is not the tallest peak. It just looks really cool. That's all. Just to skip away, you find the Alec. It definitely looks, it definitely uh, looks cool. Miles away yeah. is not the like this this peak um, above the um, clouds and it, um, it, it looks fancy but <laughs> Yeah, it's not the tallest. Just looks really cool. That's all. Just to skip away, you find the Alec Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps, and it is a UNESCO heritage site. From the ice melt of the Alps, of course, you get the source of all the rivers that feed Switzerland, including the longest river, the Rhine, which shares borders with its neighbors. However, the longest river fully in Switzerland, not shared, would be the Are or Aar River. Of course, these rivers also feed into the world-renowned lakes of Switzerland, the largest one being Lake Geneva or Lac Le Mans, in which Switzerland was like very set on making sure they hooked around the end with Geneva and got most of it when splitting it with France. Nonetheless, the largest lake fully in Switzerland is Neuchâtel, not to be confused with Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft cheese comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft... <laughs> That's funny, just pause to clarify. Yeah, there's a difference. <laughs> cheese comes from yeah and those highlights don't even cover a fraction of all the cool nature stuff in in switzerland <laughs> you can hike then at the end you arrive at the lake and it's perfect is it like fresh enough for you to drink from or no you could maybe but guy might have peed in it five minutes ago right? ah yeah yeah well switzerland sure is beautiful but when it comes to natural resources we're actually not so rich we don't really have any much of our economy is actually based on industry and services to explain a little bit more about the economy and industrial output here's noah to explain <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So we all know high-end things like luxury Swiss watches and Swiss knives are made in Switzerland, which are, by the way, a multi-billion dollar industry. By the way, if you're looking for a backpack, Swiss gear is amazing. I've had one of those backpacks for probably over a decade. Great stuff. Good backpacks, man. But the one industry that everyone takes focus on, even though it only makes up- Banks. <laughs> I guess he would talk about the Swiss banks. Um, I'm just checking something here on my phone. Give me a moment. A 
about 15% of their economy, is the Swiss banking system, home to two world-renowned companies, UBS and Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse being founded by Alfred Escher. Look him up. The appeal is that Swiss banks offer an insane amount of privacy and confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good to meet you, Nant. Hello, I am uh, Simon and I'm actually from Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? You am um, here um, a moment ago. Confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good to meet you, Nant. Hello, I am uh, Simon and I'm actually from Switzerland. What? This is Switzerland. Switzerland. I'm not sure if I can um, make it as good. Of course, not as good as he. He speaks with uh, naturally accent. Oh, dialect, dialect. <laughs> but um, Switzerland, Switzerland. I'm not sure. It, it sounds um, um, recognizable and um, funny, amazing. I mean, let's continue. What part of Switzerland? Bodensee. Wow. See, back in 1713, uh, Switzerland's Great Council decided they would outlaw the uh, financial disclosure to uh, Europe's financial elites. In addition, all forms of bribery were pretty much criminalized. Since 1934, it was uh, made criminal to disclose the identity of any account holders, as long as they didn't have any extreme felony charges. Even though the interest rates are really low, sometimes the rate is even negative, which means you have to pay to hold Swiss francs or to open an account. Nonetheless, our rate of investments are pretty high like at 2.5 percent due to the regular stability of the Swiss economy. Granted there was some controversy as there have been many lawsuits uh, brought against our beautiful banks such as the 1996 Holocaust victim class action lawsuit which claimed that Swiss banks knowingly concealed assets illegally acquired by the Nazis. Then again in 2009 uh, the US uh, strong-armed Switzerland into you know uh, disclosing uh, wealthy assets from 50,000 Americans. It worked but now you know Swiss banks don't accept any American or even Swiss people who move to America or who make a vacation in Florida. If you'd like to open an account, just contact me on Instagram and it will be totally confidential. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Adieu miteinander. Au revoir. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, with great bank. <laughs> the end was very funny. <laughs> I heard that, that um, I heard that there was some controversy at some point, but um, very interesting. Banks comes great liabilities. But of course, Switzerland is more than just banks. They have thriving pharmaceutical tech and tourism sectors. The palate is getting dry. Is that a Swiss bottle too? That'd be pretty cool if it was. They take their agriculture industry very seriously. The government actually subsidizes 70% of farms. I mean, how can you say no to the wonderful dairy provided by Swiss cows? To explain more about the animal situation, here is Gary Harlow. Hey guys, uh, Caleb's actually busy. He couldn't do this segment, but uh, we got Ian. So uh, you're gonna be Gary Harlow today. You're probably gonna mess it up, but I don't care. Yay. I'm a screw up for sure. Switzerland, being the alpine nation it is, provides quite the habitat for all kinds of strange species. The country has 18 official nature parks. Now in these mountains you have quite a many of mountain adapted undulates. Much noted are the ibex and the chamois. Thanks to their two toed hooves, these little guys latch on to the narrowest of walls. And this makes you think, are they brave or are they just stupid? I ask myself that a lot. Unfortunately, most of the predators like the gray wolf and the Eurasian. Amazing. I think he makes a good job as um, this other guy. I'm not sure what his name was, but um, uh, I watched some videos um, um, from I mean, you know, <laughs> many videos, and I saw, I have seen him a lot, and he's, he looks very um, similar. I think he is doing a good job as um, pretending to be him. Asian lynx are incredibly rare. Brown bears were actually hunted till extinction in 1904. Now, one species of predator that does thrive in Switzerland is the European asp. It's a viper, and it's well adapted to the high altitude. Now the bite's extremely painful. Now unlike most countries, Switzerland doesn't have a national animal. But if you ask around, you might find out that the unofficial Swiss animal is the iconic Swiss cow. Even though they're not naturally from these here mountains. All right, well that's it for me, fellas. This is terrible. I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm sorry. It is much better than I. I mean, I think it was great. I think he did a great job. He of course exaggerated. Um, but um, when you pretend to be someone else, you naturally, I think. Exaggerate. Thanks, Ian. Uh, 
Anyway, we discussed much of the industry, economy, and physical makeup. That means there's only one more part left. Food! Now, I love doing this part, but I will gracefully step down and let an actual Swiss geography take over. Hello, we are Mara and Terence, and today we are going to talk about Swiss food. We have to talk about cheese, of course. Thousands of varieties of them. You probably also know the popular dishes, fondue and raclette, rösti, which is like a hash brown, apfelmagrone, zürichschnatzlitz, bernerplatte, Havre Vaudois, Malakoff de Winzel. Birchermüsli. And desserts, Posle Lackerli, Bündner Nusstorte, Zuckerkirchstorte. Hermisel. And of course, uh, chocolate. Yeah, although we don't have cocoa trees here. <laughs> we also invented absinthe which is a super strong alcohol, can give you hallucinations. Then there is also another soft drink uh, called Rivella. And uh, finally, in every Swiss kitchen, mochi and automat. And like a mini automat, seriously, uh, in a <laughs> Swiss person's hiking backpack. That's it. <laughs> and I gotta, I gotta try some of those desserts you mentioned. All right, Barb's back to you. Thank you, Noah. Also, fun fact, because Switzerland is so expensive, we actually like to go shopping in other countries just because it's cheaper. There are some laws what you can bring back, like uh, one kilogram of meat, five liters of wine or one liter of strong liquor and one kilogram of butter. They actually check at the border when you drive through? Yes. But I mean, you guys do have good stuff. I mean, you, you're well known for your cheese and chocolate. We put it on everything. You bake something in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi, why not put some raclette? Yeah, food always brings people together. Except for that one time in Lindau with that waiter, I swear. Seriously, dude. Four years later and you're still traumatized. Yes, I'm still pissed off. Anyway, let's move on. Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons. And there's actually kind of a word you guys have in Switzerland. Explain, Herman. It's Eidgenossenschaft. What does it mean? An oath alliance came along and formed an... Um, Eidgenossenschaft, yes. Uh, it, um... Uh. I heard of this. <laughs> Nation, except for Ticino, which we conquered. Despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own canton cultural difference, at the end of the day, they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the populace. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on Earth. Ethnically speaking, things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals and the remaining 25% are resident foreigners. I also don't understand why he always breaks down the ethnicity and demographics. Um, it's boring. I mean, um, who cares how many people in the country are white, or Hispanic, or um, I don't know, black. Um, I mean, demography is a little bit more interesting, but still, it's not so important one of the highest proportions in the developed world. From here, things get a little overlappy because within both groups, everything breaks down linguistically as well. Often, Switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic, in which case about 63% of the country are primarily German-speaking Swiss, 23% are primarily French-speaking, and somewhere around 8-9% to are primarily Italian-speaking. Finally, less than 1% are Romance-speaking. Keep in mind, this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as primary regardless of their ethnic background. What we do know, though, is that of the 25% foreign residents, about 64% of them are from the EU or EFTA countries, the largest being Italians, followed by Germans and Portuguese and French. There's a sizable Kosovar Albanian community, and of the Asian community, Sri Lankans, mostly of Tamil descent, make up the largest demographic. The Swiss franc is our currency, and we drive on the right side of the road. And you guys use the J plug outlet, which I hate, because there's like an inward diamond-shaped divot, and my C plug adapters don't fit. Why do you, you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of Europe. It's so weird. Well, sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of Europe and then it's too late. In Switzerland, the dishwashers used to be 55 centimeters and then Europe introduced a new standard of 60 centimeters. But the problem is it costs more to manufacture in a special size. So our dishwashers cost three times as much. Yay. Anyway, Switzerland has four official languages. Swiss German. All right, they already tell. Swiss German, French, Italian, and this um uh, a small c community language um Roman or Romanic or something like this, where which had just less than one percent, um of the population, um yeah. But um I didn't read this thing. I I read it. I talked. I said it before. I read it. Read it. But yeah, let's continue. 
German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, and Romansh. Even though less than 1% of the country speaks it, it's still an official language. It's actually pretty closely related to vulgar Latin, which was spoken in the Roman Empire, and uh, it's also a cousin of Romanian. So most of us know three languages somehow. What is the difference between Swiss German and Hochdeutsch spoken in Germany? So Swiss German is... Okay, let's see. That's, this would be interesting. <laughs> I speak Hoch German, High German, Hochdeutsch. Um, so let's see. It's a, a very strong dialect. We have uh, dropped, for example, the simple past tense, and uh, the Germans don't really understand us. Don't even get started with French Swiss as well. Although I do like how they use the nonant and uh, huitant and uh, septant, cap vent and caponti. Like, <sighs> and don't even get started with Ticino Italian. In, in fact, you know what? Mat Matteo can explain it. Here you go. This guy can explain. So Ticino Swiss sounds very much like uh, Northern uh, Lombardy. You can't tell if it's a uh, Swiss or not just by the pronunciation, but the Swiss have some specific word that give them up. For example, they say Natel instead of mobile phone or they say lift instead of ascensore for saying lift. Except for this, it's just usual Northern Italian uh, speak. Anyway, regardless of the linguistic background, they are not French Swiss or German Swiss or Italian. They're all just Swiss. For what's worth though, there's so much backstory with Switzerland. For example, the Habsburg family which ruled the Austrian-Hungarian Empire for centuries was from Habsburg in Argau, Switzerland. But they lost with their knights against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the interesting contrast to the otherwise neutral, peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the Swiss was so well-renowned throughout Europe that it actually... As they got hired from, as mercenaries, I think, um, from other countries. So you kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries and in the end it might be a French king fighting an Italian army and in the end it's Swiss fighting Swiss. That's so weird. And then they actually decided to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality. Nonetheless, you know, their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed. Uh, explain a little bit more, Herman. In neutrality, you also have to treat both sides of the war similar. For example, you could not trade with any of them, but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany. So we traded with Germany, we traded some with the Allies. In the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers, well, you had to, to stay you, neutral. Yeah. You had to do what you had to do. How do you deal with all this pressure trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody? It's a tough question. But for what it's worth, Switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost and this is one of the reasons why Switzerland is a conscription country you go to military yes it's wrong it's wrong and it remains wrong you cannot justify it I don't care if you want to stay neutral it's good never have any war but don't have a conscription I mean I yeah, don't stay out of the boss stay neutral it's okay after you're 19 once for half a year and then every year a couple of weeks three or four until you're 30 or 31 there's a disclaimer though there are some exceptions the swiss military has some quotas of how many people they want if you have some health issues you don't have to go to the military but you will be paying three percent of your salary to the army mm -hmm. and if you have ethical reasons not to go you can also Why? fill out a form apply yeah. to not go to the military but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service it's, it's, it's fine, that's fine. Other countries don't even offer this opportunity to have um, an alternative and I will do it. I will if I would if I would be Swiss um, I would do it. Otherwise I um if I ever um move to Switzerland, which I mean if I have the chance I would maybe do. Um I would do it um uh, after being thirty one. So <laughs> but um yeah, uh, um when you offer an alternative that's fine. I do it service maybe yeah. where you do some some projects for the good of the country so at the end of the day somehow you have to serve switzerland yeah and after the military service you usually take the gun home technically switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations in the world this all kind of plays into their unique system of government it's often said that switzerland is in an eternal election campaign so we vote three to four times a year and we also vote uh, regional for people to get into the national council so it's kind of like switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians 
musicians, would you say? A little bit of both? A little bit of both. But it's like you're very involved in everything. Yes, we are involved and if we don't like something, there will be a referendum. But in Switzerland, it's relatively easy. Yeah. Some cantons uh, have different voting systems like uh, voting publicly by raising hand or some weird family sort. The head of state of Switzerland actually though is the federal council. And one of them is the president, but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year and he's just one among equals. Fun fact, Switzerland can actually deny citizenship to anybody who wants to apply for it. In fact, in 2010, there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying. There's a lot of those stories, like somebody not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store. No passport for you. In regards to religion, like most countries in Europe, most of the people will at least culturally identify with Christianity and in Switzerland. Of course, this sounds a little bit weird, but um, uh, I don't know too much about this, so um, yeah. It sounds weird <laughs> for me. <laughs> the case is mostly with Catholicism or Protestantism. It used to be very important. My grandma told me uh, her parents would not have accepted her bringing home a Catholic. But nowadays, uh, we don't really care anymore. Now, of course, this is one source that played a role in many of the regional differences throughout Switzerland. And they also kind of have like a healthy level of regional competition. And with that, let's move on to the sports part with art. So, sports in Switzerland go hand in hand, even on the corporate side. In fact, because the tax laws, many European and international sports federations hold their headquarters in Switzerland. Domestically though, Switzerland has some sports that they actually invented, such as... And um, uh, maybe people ought to talk about this, this uh, she's running thing, where uh, she's is rolling down a hill and they run after it. I I'm not sure, maybe they will mention it. Schwangen, which is played in sawdust, and the contenders wear burlap shorts. There's also Hornison. It's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any case, when you live in a country with big snowy mountains, you're going to get an emphasis on, this is, I know, a total shocker, on winter sports. Skiing and mountaineering are pretty much taught from adolescence. Switzerland also invented competitive sledding. They invented the first bobsled and bobsled track in St. Moritz. Switzerland has done pretty pretty well considering their size in both the summer and winter Olympics. Alpine skiing being their strongest event with 22 gold medals. On another note, auto racing was actually banned in Switzerland. They had a huge crash in 1955 that stopped it all. But the government made a little loophole exception for electric racing. And finally, we cannot end this segment without mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him, Roger Federer. He's part of the big three, 20 Grand Slam singles title winner, 100 three ATP single. I'm not such a big sport guy so I can't say much about sports but um yeah so <laughs> that's the reason why I stay mo mostly silent here. <laughs> titles two-time olympic medalist he has streets named after him coins with his face he's a model for rolex and numerous brands there's a lot of babies out there named after him for sure i once got a trophy for potato sack racing and it was a big deal like my mom was proud of me and i do not know how to end my segment so um <laughs> thank you art yeah the swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country they still can pack a punch with a competitive side and we have this Thing called Kantonligeist, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own. I, I don't think that they will mention the she's um, running thing. Maybe they will mention it later, but it, it's it's funny. It's you you have to. Um, I think it is uh, from Switzerland. Maybe I'm stupid. I thought it's from Switzerland. Maybe it's from Austria, and I remember it wrong. Yeah, this can actually be the case. Thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Hi guys, I'm back! And remember, you can get a Random Hannah shirt at GeographyNow.com. The culture of Switzerland cannot be easily summarized as a nation. That's because it breaks down to each canton having its distinct identity. There are lots of stereotypes for them, but here are some that you guys told us. Argao is known for having bad drivers. Valet has the most incomprehensible accent, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glarus doesn't exist. Zurich has a superiority complex. Um, uh, um, man, some countries have this kind of um, um, gag where they um, uh, say a certain country, a certain part of the country, a certain city, a certain region doesn't exist. Like the Americans with um, the US with... Um, uh, How's it called? I forgot. Huh. 
Massive slip my mind. And Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and alternative medicine. Funny enough, Inner Appenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country as a whole till 1971. In fact, Switzerland is known for having many interesting laws. For example, if you live in an apartment, you are not allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed to cut your grass, hang your laundry or do noisy chores on Sunday. The Swiss really seem to value their silence. The Swiss are known for their many discoveries and inventions as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil, Velcro, the vegetable peeler, the discovery of nucleic acid and DNA, and they were co-creators of the World Wide Web. Notable contemporary icons of Swiss culture include figures like Globy, Papa Mole, Shellen Orsley, and the most famous one worldwide, Heidi. They are notable for the- oh, Yeah, Heidi, I, I, of course. <laughs> I know it. Visual yeah. art in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13th century Romanesque architecture, to the early 20th century Dada movement. Even Helvetica font and its variants originated in Switzerland. It's one of the preferred fonts that we use on Geography Now. Speaking of the arts, one way to learn about Switzerland is through its film. And if you want to learn more about Switzerland's films, follow my channel, Filmography Now. Has a spin -off. Da -da 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 -da. In any case, each canton in Switzerland has its own festivals and celebrations. You have every Everything from the Basler Fasnacht, where people in Basel dress up in masks and throw confetti, to Umspunenfest, held every 12 years in the town of Interlaken, where men compete to throw masks. Maybe it's also a festival, the she's running thing, and not the sport. <laughs> I'm not sure. Boulders. There's too many festivals, we can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. The Florida man himself, Key. We need another hurricane. <laughs> What's up everybody, Keith here. So today I decided to wear my bathrobe because you know, you gotta live life comfortable. By the way guys, you can buy a Keith shirt. Look at that design, I designed it myself. Okay, so you guys think you know Swiss music and all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling, cowbells. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Many experts will agree that European Alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used by herdsmen trying to call their livestock. Or or communicating far distances between villages in the mountains. Many will say, I have seen uh, this instrument. Or communicate. Yeah, this, this thing's before. It, it's, um, it, I mean, yeah, it just looks a little bit unpractical, but uh, probably a good, amazing sound. And for communication um, in the Alps, maybe very good. Indicating far distances between villages in the mountains. Many will say that the traditional national dance music of Switzerland, though, is Lander. It uses a 3-4 time signature. Quarter note gets every single beat, whatever. This style was actually adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple hundred years. They actually hosted and won the very first Eurovision Song Contest. Fun fact, 30 years later, they would actually win again, but with Celine Dion, even though she's Canadian. And for some reason, Tina Turner is a citizen. That has nothing to do with banks and money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there are tons of music festivals like Street Parade Fest, Festivals, the Montreux Jazz Festival, which has had such artists as Pat Metheny, Steve Morse Band. I hope to go there at some point, goal of mine. There's even a statue of Freddie Mercury as Queen recorded many of their top hits in a studio over there. All right, we don't have time to talk about the entire evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. But however, what I will say is that if you like heavy metal bands, you should check out Celtic Frost, which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed my segment today. Stay cute. Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So something important about Switzerland is how they. It has something very um uh, Florida like um to sense in the bathrobe um uh, and I don't know um uh, maybe Florida um there's all the memes about Florida or certain people in Florida um I, I mean I like to watch this kind of videos from um uh, I'm normal day in Russia which sometimes seems very odd and very weird but um it's funny. And maybe this is not the too un, not too different from Florida. So maybe some people in Siberia have a, a, some kind of similar mindset to um, certain parts of life than like like in Florida with hurricanes and alligators and the heat and beers, the cold and um, wilderness um, in, the, in in Siberian um, 
um, led <laughs> very far away from um, humanity. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's it's funny. <laughs> Interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment, the uh, friend zone. Oh! As soon as I get along with most countries, um, uh, I mean, they, with their neutrality, I think they get along mostly with all of them. Recently, they dropped something of the non um, um, neutrality when they also um, um, sanctioned Russia, which I think was wrong. Um, and but they didn't deliver any reference to Ukraine, so they. So I, I hope they um, become more neutral um, in the future, and at or at least stay as neutral as now. So, um, never join NATO. Never um, um. I mean, the, the European Union, they could join, they will not probably, but um, this would be not as um, breaking the neutrality as NATO, of course, <laughs> a military alliance. So, never join NATO, of course, and also don't join the Euro e European Union, um, but, yeah. I think it, it, it was also um, up for um, uh, um, debate, not um, referendum. In Switzerland, whether to join the United Nations, but they did. I just see something. Okay, let's continue. We have managed to actually touch a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN before them. Although you guys did host the European... Yeah, we'll host anything with you diplomacy. But hosted? We'll but... also pay for it, but we don't join. Here's how they played out their diplomacy game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Switzerland's foreign policy is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. This is partially why they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and background, there are some countries that Switzerland has to admit they have quite a closer link to, if at the very least culturally. No one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss, but in reality these two are so heavily tied in, especially with the Baden-Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. The area around the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss confederacy that was lost during Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, South Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berliner German. In that regard, Austria has traditionally been one of their biggest rivals in things like sports and outclassing each other with things like classical music, architecture, and general welfare. They both admire each other's systems of operation, and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad was hosted in Paris in 1798. Today, France hosts more Swiss people in diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly a quarter million, and they appreciate each other's, shall we say, bougie standards. On the other hand, Italians, mostly Lombards, have been rapidly moving into Switzerland, mostly in the Ticino canton, and are really taking advantage of that Italian-speaking official status. The Vatican City to this day still hires Swiss guards to stand at the palace, a tradition- I heard this- also, it's also funny. <laughs> it looked amazing, but yeah that has been going on since 1506, one of the oldest military units continuously in operation in the world. They still dress in traditional Renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms. It's not just for show. When it comes to their best friends, though, most Swiss will tell you, oh, we're neutral. We can't say we have a best friend. I, I say it's Liechtenstein. <laughs> Very small, tiny country. <laughs> But after you get them a little tipsy and ask them one more time, they might make a Freudian slip and say, Little Liechtenstein. Switzerland and Little Liechtenstein <laughs> go hand in hand. They are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically Switzerland's adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality, but Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens. Orders and the same stance on armed new ah, despite the fact that Liechtenstein doesn't have um military. <laughs> okay, moment. Um let's go back a little bit. I want to see the um um context. 
adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality. Armed neutrality, uh, but Liechtenstein doesn't have a military, okay. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I mean, Liechtenstein is, I think, a monarchy or so, um, uh, but uh, they don't have military. Amazing, I like it. And um, also um, Costa Rica and Iceland and a few other countries um, maybe um, also don't have military, which is amazing. Um, a very good reason to move to one of these countries. But Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to, and even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968, or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein is just happy to see them and offers them drinks upon arrival. Alright, and in conclusion... <laughs> I, I heard a story where... um. Was it Switzerland or Liechtenstein? I'm not sure. Um, they um, went to a war and they came back with uh, one soldier more because they made a friend um, than they um, sent in. Which um, I'm not sure if it was Austria, Switzerland or Liechtenstein. Norman, take it away. You're the Swiss guy. I'm out. Switzerland is a beautiful country where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Herman, for being in this video. It was so that. fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here to just see you. Stay tuned. Syria is coming up next. Hi, Helen. Welcome to the Afterthoughts. Um, I watched the video. I edited um, most of, of the video. I just have to record this um, small video, which you see now at the end. After you have already seen the reaction, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Um, Shinta is already um gone. She ha it's free time for her now. So, um, I I already recorded also an after thought video, but um or outro, <laughs> it's also called. But I was um not happy with the outro, so I um make another one. And um, here the rest of the videos, video. So you see all of the names. Credit to all of those, of course. One day I maybe also have such a I don't know outro song or intro song with um. Be, be, uh, it looks fancy. It looks um well designed, but um not in the moment. Maybe later. Um. Switzerland, yeah, neutrality. I hope they um keep up the neutrality um uh, and stay neutral in the future. Don't join NATO. Don't join uh, join the United European Union. Um, you kind of I mean European Union is okay for me, I think, but NATO not, not a military alliance. And um, also I hope that Austria and um Ireland and some of the other countries in South East um Europe um stay out of NATO. If some countries would also like to um, step out of NATO, I would also enjoy this and uh, um, appreciate this. I think all military alliances in the world should um, dissolve and uh, stop existing. It's, I mean, military. <laughs> I'm against military and wars. So, um, of course, I'm against um, NATO. So, and uh, I'm not sure what direction I will do next. Uh, if you have an idea, a suggestion, then please write down in the comments um, the the link or send me I mean send the link and or suggest me a video game I should play. If you are interested in Trails into Reverie, a very beautiful game, um then also check out my um, playthrough and um, there will be maybe even right now in the um credits um be a um link to the video or the description. But otherwise you find it on my channel the last videos are all mostly um uh, playthrough i mean episodes to this um, game yes thank you for watching <laughs> please subscribe and uh ring the bell um subscribe um to his channel as well of course and yeah support me to get 1000 subscribers thank you for watching